Hello everybody, there are many tutorials for SFM out there which tell you some neat little tricks and a small thing so you end up with scattered information. I never really found a tutorial on how to improve the looks of your posters or videos which covered everything. So I thought I'd actually make said tutorial myself. Since some people have asked for me to make one and so that I can actually give something back after a collab. The collab also made me understand what most people struggle with and where improvements can be made. This video will not cover posing or animating, as this is covered plenty by a lot of other people. You can just Google or YouTube that stuff. I will use my old videos as bad examples. So here's a list on how to make your posters and videos look better. Number 1. The camera settings. This one is very basic. Before you place your model, start off by spawning in a camera, which you then make selectable to be able to access the camera setting. You can do so by right clicking the list on the left or clicking the little plus on top. And select create animation set for existing element. Put your big fat finger on that and then click camera 1, or in this case camera 2, because I already made a template. Select the camera and you should see various options. Before we take a look on that though, we want to make it so that a camera has a right field of view. Go up here and select lenses. Most of the time, 35mm is the best to use, which is also commonly used in movies. In rare instances you might find yourself needing to switch to either 24mm or 50mm depending on what's going on. But generally I'd recommend not going further than that. There's nothing more unprofessional than a bad FOV. Now we come to the actual camera settings below. Both focal distance and the patcher regulate the depth of field. That's when a camera is focusing on one certain distance and blurs out the rest. The focal distance is for the distance it will focus on and the aperture is the amount of blur that will be used. SSAO bias, radius and strength all control the ambient occlusion. That's the shadow created on objects. There's many ways to vary these but I usually like to go with this exact setting. Don't worry about it looking grainy, we'll get rid of that later. Number 2. Lighting. What can I do for you? Without any lighting, the picture will look bland and boring, much like my law class. Sadly, simply putting an all white light pointing at the main character isn't enough, so you need to get more in depth on that. Simply create a light and drag it onto the viewport to control it like a camera. Then make it so that you get one main light source. Lower the intensity instead of moving the light away from the action. You'll notice that the shadows are most of the time not really sharp. To counteract that, drop shadow filter size down a bit. Don't make it zero though, otherwise it will look unnaturally sharp. If you scroll down, you come to color settings, which really make the icing on the cake. Now also give the character some rim light so that he sticks out from the background. If you don't know what a rim light is, I would recommend watching Dirty Eyeballs video on 3 point lighting. It's a very important technique you should learn. You can also make volumetric lights by right clicking the light to add some sort of dust effect behind the character. Sunlights or disco lights. Be creative. On another note, it's also worth checking if the overall map isn't too bright. Otherwise your entire image will be too bright with all the lights. Go into the camera settings and play around with Tone Map Scale. Number 3. Progressive Refinement and Ambient Occlusion. Earlier I've pointed out how the ambient occlusion doesn't really look all too well and it's all grainy and straight up garbage. You shouldn't make posters and videos like that, <coughs> like me in the past. You may also notice how the blur looks really cheap. Instead of having it look smooth, it more or less looks like the background is doubled. If this was a video, the motion blur would also just look as bad. That's why you should right click the viewport and go to render settings. Make sure to change the amount of samples to a higher value. The standard one is just 4, 
I usually go with 256. Above that you won't notice any difference anymore really. Usually 128 is already enough though. 64 can be good but sometimes it isn't enough. Just note that the more samples you use the longer rendering will take. So after increasing that you will realize your image looks much better. Number 4. Export settings. This is more of an issue for videos than for posters. Most people would logically do the following. Go to export, select movie, mp4 and render. SFM is actually completely stupid. It's really stupid you will see every time you use it. So you should never really do that. Otherwise you might end up with corrupted videos or the contrast is extremely off seen on my old videos. So instead of selecting movies, select image sequence. That basically means instead of making a video format, each frame will be rendered individually as an image. You can then later put them all back together to a video. I personally use Adobe Premiere for that. But there's also alternatives that are free like Virtual Dap or Blender. PT Jack actually made a wonderful video explaining how to do set thing in Blender, so go watch that. You will also notice how you cannot select a higher resolution than 720p by default. To be able to do that, go to the launch options and type SFM resolution 1080 to enable Full HD. You can also type 2160 to enable 4K as well. Do not try anything in the middle, it will render all black. I've tried it out. The other commands in here are also useful. The first one increases the quality of shadows, while the other two enable usage of reflections in water. Also, when rendering a poster, note that selecting poster will disable all bloom effects. So if you want to have bloom, render a single frame using image sequence. Number 5. Cinematography have you ever seen these black bars on top and bottom in popular movies? That's actually because the video is in the screen format 21x9 instead of the popular monitor and TV format 16x9. Why is that more cinematic? Because the human eye has a higher field of vision horizontally than it does vertically. You can also add black bars in SFM from the workshop. But when you render these, the black bars will just make a fake 21x9 resolution. The video is still coded to be 16x9. So even though it looks like 21x9 on a 16x9 screen, users of actual 21x9 screen will hate you because they get 4 black bars. So to make the thing actually render in 21x9, only possible afterwards, check out why this Fox video on that. Also another important thing for cinematography is the correct amount of frames per second. At the beginning when creating a new session you are asked how many FPS you want to have. I would recommend not going over 30 FPS because you will get the thing called soap opera effect. Your video will look cheap like a sitcom or as the name suggests soap opera. I don't have an explanation for why that happens, but I'm sure someone in the comments is already yelling at me for not knowing at them. So ask them. I personally always, always go with 30 FPS. Number 6. This is a last important tip from a friend of mine who doesn't actually work for DreamWorks. So here's what he has to say. Thank you, Mike. This is the end. If you've watched it until the end, thank you for watching and for listening. There's much more stuff than that to cover and I never really will be, but I please you to never stop watching tutorials. There's so many more out there to watch and you will always take something useful with you that you didn't know before. With that said, I'm out, have a wonderful day.